This tutorial will guide you through the process of scanning a grocery receipt using an OCR API in Node.js. OCR APIs are designed to scan text in images and convert them into meaningful data. Our objective is to extract information from a receipt. There are numerous APIs available in the market that can perform this task, but the most reliable one that I found is Verify. They provide a free plan that allows the processing of 50 documents per month, which is sufficient for our application. Let's create an account with Verify, making sure to select the OCR API and fill in all the necessary details. When prompted with a warning, select Yes. Since we want to use the OCR API to develop our application, The Receipts API is the most relevant API among all the available options. To access it, navigate to the API docs in the sidebar, select Invoices and Receipts, and choose the Process, a document option. Your client ID and authorization should be populated automatically. If they are not, go to the Billing section on the left side and activate a free plan. If you still don't see the client ID, click on Search Document in the sidebar and then click on Process Document. This should provide you with the client ID. Next, we need to upload a sample receipt image to an online image uploading service and obtain a free public URL for the image. Insert the image URL in the appropriate field and click on Send API Request. Once the processing is complete, you can view all the information related to the receipt. To pull and process data, we will need to write some code. In our Node.js application, we can create a new file called OCR Receipt under the lib folder. Once we have done that, we can import our get Axios instance and error handler methods that we created in a previous tutorial. If you need assistance with this step, please refer to the link in the description. Next, we will create our Axios instance by passing the base URL of the API we want to call. We can obtain this information from the website. Additionally, we will need to send the following headers. Content type should be application JSON. We should accept the JSON, client ID, and authorization, which we can also obtain from the website. Now we can create a function called process the receipt, which takes the file URL as input and will return a promise. Inside the promise, we will use our Axios instance to call a post API call to documents, passing the file URL as a parameter to ensure that everything is working as expected. We can console log the response to see what information we are getting. Before we test this out, Let's make sure to add our client ID and authorization to our environment file. If you need help setting up the environment file, please refer to the first tutorial in this series, link in description. To test this functionality, we can import the process the receipt method into our index file and within the get request, retrieve the path and test URL of the receipt. If the path is equal to test, we will call the process the receipt function. For now, we will simply return to success. Now we can debug our code to test it out. It may take a few seconds for the API to pass the image. But once it's done, we can see all of the information about the receipt in a structured way. Each line item is an item on the receipt, and we can obtain information such as the item price quantity, total, and more. However, we may only be interested in certain pieces of information for now. This is where the pass the data function comes in. By passing the response object, this function can extract the information we need, returning an object 
with the following data points. Bill date, an array of items each with information about the item, payment method, reference number, total cost, vendor information. We can loop through all of the line items and push only the necessary information into our items array. Specifically, we need the description, name of the item, total cost for the item, quantity and price of the individual item. Now, we can hook this method into the process the receipt function and return the process data. We should see all of the information in a structured way, as desired. In the next tutorial, we will explore how to save this data in Firebase so that we can retrieve it later. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.